new helicopter keeping Marines safe in the air and on the ground. Plus, pilots getting back to the basics with the oldest aircraft in the Navy. And a living legend returns to the place that launched his career. We're navigating the news of NAVAIR. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Prue. I'm Sergeant Major Sims. Thank you for joining us. We begin with the latest step towards carrier operations for the UCAS-D. Using the X-47B software, the program successfully completed three landings of an F-18. The test demonstrated how the unmanned system would work in a carrier environment. For the execution of the flight, we essentially did exactly what we briefed in the order we briefed it, using the shipboard software and the X-47 UCAS software, and with me shadowing the controls only, but letting the system actually fly the airplane down to touchdown. The next step is to launch and recover the F-18 on a carrier using the X-47B software. Carrier trials are expected to begin in 2013. The AH-1Z is ready for combat. It's the latest attack helicopter working to keep Marines out of harm's way. It is absolutely one of the most state-of-the-art helicopters in existence today. The performance, the avionics systems, and the targeting systems, they're phenomenal. The Zulu will be out there giving the Marines uh, twice the time on station, uh, twice the range, and also twice the ordnance capability over its predecessor, the H-1W. The aircraft is now getting fielded to the actual deploying squadrons, not just the training squadron. The main thing we were working on was the sensor system. It can look at longer ranges. It can see both at night and during the daytime. And then with that sensor system, we use that to target the uh, missiles on the onboard weapons. Gives the Marines situational awareness and, and vision far beyond the maximum range of their weapon systems. It really reduces the amount of work that the pilot has to do. So the ability to do other tasks while you're flying the aircraft has gone up tremendously. The other big advantages that this aircraft has is its sister aircraft is the UH-1Y. And from a parts commonality standpoint and a training standpoint, they're about 84% compatible. And that means that when you send aircraft to uh, a board ship or out to forward operating bases or any kind of expeditionary environment, we drastically reduce the footprint. The aircraft has great potential to increase effectiveness and improve the, the war fighting capability of the Marine Corps. It's kind of really cool to see that it uh, delivers in the end. I mean, it's a pretty lethal machine when it comes down to it. Celebrating the past and looking into the future. The Navy's newest patrol aircraft, the P-8A, is one step closer to being fully operational. The Poseidon landed at Jacksonville Naval Air Station during a centennial of naval aviation celebration. The P-8 is set to replace the aging P-3 Orion. It will work with the BAMS UAV to improve maritime surveillance and warfare capabilities. We're going to fly that UAV just like we fly the P-8. So it's the skill set that matters. It's the, the professionals that understand maritime patrol they're going to operate the P-8 one day, and the next day they're going to be operating the UAV. But in combination is where you're going to get the replacement of the P-3. The P-8 can operate for hours over land or sea. Its release to the fleet is scheduled for 2013. The Navy is celebrating the launch of its newest supply ship. More than 1,000 people watched the McLean launch into the water off San Diego. The ship is named in honor of Navy scientist William McLean, creator of the heat-seeking Sidewinder missile. Clearly his legacy is set on land, but his passion was always for the sea. As Dr. McLean once said, there are many jobs to be done in the ocean. This amazing ship, its captain and crew, will surely get the job of USNS McLean done. The McLean will carry essential supplies and equipment in support of military operations around the world. It is the 12th dry cargo ammunition ship to be operated by the Navy's military sea depth command. With nearly 50 years in flight, the de Havilland Otter has served the Navy longer than any other aircraft. Delivered to the Navy in 1956, it was the last Otter to fly in Antarctica and is the only remaining military Otter in the world. As one of three tail draggers at the test pilot school, the Otter plays an important role in classroom curriculum. You have to learn from the old, and if you don't, then when you apply it to something newer, you won't have the basis for good evaluation. So, especially from the Otter and the Beaver, the older tail drivers, even our gliders, uh, those basic fundamentals of flight 
are applicable no matter what you're flying. I love to see what it's like uh, for these guys to see this for the very first time uh, and so that they can get an appreciation for not only the aviation heritage that's represented by these old airplanes, but also because they're, they love a challenge and they love to be able to say, you know, if I can start it, I can fly it. The Test Pilot School currently operates 12 types of fixed and rotary winged aircraft. If you would like to learn more about this unique inventory and other top stories, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil backslash news. Senator John Glenn made history as the first American astronaut to orbit the Earth. During a recent visit to Naval Air Station Patuxent River, he talked about his time at Test Pilot School and how it led to his selection into the space program. It was a very different base back at that time. And uh, we had, uh, it was a very interesting time to be here though as a test pilot because we were testing a lot of the new jet aircraft, some of them supersonic, like the Crusader, that, uh, but still using the old style weapon systems and uh, machine guns and bombs and rockets and so on. And uh, so you take great pride in having made the airplanes better and safer uh, as they went to the fleet for the Navy and Marine Corps. And, uh, and later, though, that led then into a selection for the space program. You can hear the full interview with Senator John Glenn on the Nav Air news page. That's it for this edition of Airways. See you on the flight line.